Hello, I'm Tenran432, and welcome to the next part in my Mega Man X playthrough. Feeling a little sick, so I might cough and sneeze a little. But today we're going to take out Boober Ra Boober Quager? I believe his name is. <coughs> Sorry. Boober Quager? I believe it was changed to Boomerang Quager at some point, but I'm not exactly sure. But here's a stage. One of my favorite music and uh, soundtracks in the game. And, uh... So it starts out with these guys that might look familiar from the original Mega Man series. Only they have mace or maces, I believe they are. But anyway, we're gonna continue on, and I'm gonna try experimenting with these different weapons. Uh, the electric spark, uh, when it goes, when it hits walls, it goes along that wall. And the shotgun ice we've already seen with my when I was fighting uh, uh, Spark Mandrill, it can bounce off walls when it hits. So next we have a little stealth section. Uh, when those lasers are shown, you don't want to step in them, because then it'll trigger those guys to sh fire a super, super fast laser at you that you pretty hard to avoid. And uh, it takes some skill to not be detected. And then we have these mind turtles. Mind turtles, nice reference. But they'll shoot you. The super minds at you. Sorry about my voice. Okay, so the these turtles just blow them up. I, they, don't, they don't have feelings. I hope. But now we have an elevator. So it starts out slow, and then it goes a little faster. And those those platforms there are, are instant kill if you are under, standing underneath them. You know, it slows down a little. And we're nearing the top of the elevator. And now here we go. Uh, so we are climbing a tower, if you haven't noticed yet. Uh, the stage is a tower. We're climbing up the whole time. But there are these guns that will come out of it. Uh, the tower. Self-defense mechanism, I guess, for the tower. And then there are these salamanders. These lizard things climbing on the ladders. And I'm at one health, so I'd best be careful. <coughs> oh, sorry, I coughed there. Uh, the, the only reason I'm doing this while I'm sick is because I said I would post every Saturday. So, I'm, I'm sticking to my word. I'm that kind of guy. Uh, so we're almost at the top of the tower. We just got... Yeah, that, that's it. I think. So up there, there's that heart tank up there, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out the, the shotgun ice, and we're gonna want a full charge it, and then we'll be able to have a penguin skateboard. And you're gonna have to dash jump off it, but I failed there, so let's try it again. The weapon that you get from this boss will also work, because it's a bo and I failed again. Because it's a boomerang and it'll grab items for you. But let's try this again. Take three. And. Died. Amazing. Okay. I'm back. I paused the recording. But let's dash off this and very carefully. And now our health is getting pretty big. I believe I mentioned it before, but hey, I'll say it again. I don't know why I'm using the shotgun ice for these guys. It's not the most effective weapon that there is. And I don't know why I'm failing to climb this. Okay, so take them out. I'm gonna keep climbing. I don't know whose idea it was to put a gun on top of a, um... top of a flying fan. Pretty much. And then for the second part, we're gonna take it- we're gonna wanna take out the electric spark. And it'll take down those enemies on the walls. I just want to climb up, and here we are at the boss room for Boomer Kawanger. So, Boomer Kawanger, he likes to teleport around. As you can see from his intro, he's just teleporting into the room. And he can pretty ho be pretty hard to hit with his teleportation and his boomerang, which is awesome. It's on his head. You get cooler than that. But anyway, the homing torpedo will home into him. 
you don't really have to aim, you just shoot it whenever you can. And if you're too close to him, he'll try to throw you into the ceiling and that can hurt. But we already got him, so I don't need to worry about that. Until the boss rush, that is. And that's the Boomer Quanger stage. What did we get? The boomerang, uh, was this? The boomerang cutter. Okay, so as you can see, it'll fly back to us, and it can grab items for us. So speaking of grabbing items, we're gonna go to the next state, or pick up a sub-tank at Spark Bedroom. Okay, so we're down here. I think I mentioned this area earlier. So you're gonna wanna shoot the boomerang so it goes down there. And I can't seem to do it. Come on. Just a little bit closer. Just a little bit closer. There we go. And uh, now we have the sub tank. So let's go to the escape the stage. Escape unit. And next we are going to take on the last maverick on the list. Which would be... Stick Chameleon. Alright, so he's the hardest boss... I will, I think, um, other than the final boss, he's pretty hard to beat, and, uh, but I don't, one thing, the only thing I don't like about this game, Mega Man X1, is that going to stages in your own order can make the game really hard, because if you came to Chill Penguin stage last, you wouldn't have the dash, and then you can't, you aren't as mobile at all, and you can't dodge attacks as well. So, um, you can't really choose other than, uh, Chill Penguin in the beginning. Unless you want a really real challenge. But anyway, here's our final... I think it's our last heart tank? But... So, if you didn't take out Launch Octopus, there wouldn't be this water here. But taking out Launch Octopus, uh, puts this water here so we can jump a little higher in water. For some reason. And you're going to want to use that to get across this pit here to get to the heart tank. Now, right above is the next armor part, and it's the chest plate. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, it's the chest plate, but before you get that, there's a mini boss that has very similar resemblance to Otto from the Mega Man 7, either in the shop. I'll play that one eventually. I don't know why I'm playing Mega Man games in this order, but I am. And I'm not sure which weapon is most effective against him, but his claws are like made of some metal that are in invincible completely. And uh, he'll throw, he'll throw, his, he'll jump around and throw his claws at you, and that's all he can do. But if his claw is near enough to a wall, he'll pull himself into the wall. Sometimes it doesn't work all the time. There we go. So, he has a lot of health, but there are little, uh, steam, little steam coming out of him when he's at lower health, and there we go. Little smoke puffs, or whatever they are. And come on, let's take him out. We got this. Come on. Rapid fire. Where's my Nintendo... My Nintendo, uh, turbo, turbo controller. I actually have one of those. Somewhere. But, um, so anyway, he's, he's dying, as you can see all that smoke coming out. And we, he should go down any, any shot now. Come on. Come on. Just die. Just die. Any time now. Any, there we go, finally. So we beat him, and, oh cool, a Dr. Light capsule. This capsule contains a new type of body armor. It will decrease damage by 50%. So I'm not sure why I got this earlier, but it was probably the stage order that I wanted to go in. But 50% damage reduction is a whole bunch of damage reduction. Like, any enemy that had you... That was hard for you should be easier. Way easier. Or any enemy that you think took a lot of health from you. Should be way easier now. But uh, So you have the... 
50% damage less. Less damage. Whatever. But, so yeah, that's cool. I think it's... I don't... I don't really see the point in using it, but it's very effective. I don't really see a difference, but it's, it's there. But, so there, now there's, there's, there's these pecking birds that will throw worms at you, and there's those little bush, dis disguised bush creatures things. Here's another one of those something Joes, I don't remember. Uh, and there's one up there, just sitting there in plain sight. Now we have another ride armor. These things are awesome. Well, let's take these guys out. Tack, tack. I've already explained what the ride armors are. But I don't think you take damage while you're in there. So that's awesome. But you only have a certain amount of it. Now I'm gonna try to get up there. Get that health. Alright, there we go. More health for me. And we're almost at Stick Chameleon. Almost. So there's like one more of these um, heavy armor guys, but I'm just gonna run away because I don't need to fight them. And here we are. As you can probably have guessed, Stink Chameleon's weakness is the rolling cutter, I think it's called. But it's really effective against him. And when you he climbs up there, you can just shoot it there. And when he climbs up there, you can shoot it there. And when he climbs up there, you can shoot it there. And when he climbs up there, you can... Okay, you know what I'm saying. But this attack is really hard to dodge, but you can stop him from doing it with the boomerang cutter. And I'm only not doing the, quitting that pattern to show you his other attacks. So he can throw those at you. He can go invisible. So that's something to watch out for. And you're really going to want to take down those. Take him down when he starts raining spikes at you. That's pretty much all of his attacks. So there we go, we got him. So that was all the eight Mavericks. And, uh... So now, that's that, now that that's taken care of, we're going to meet up with Zero. According to Part 1's promise that he'll meet up with us later. But for now, we get the Chameleon Sting, which is backwards for Sting Chameleon, which is the boss, which is not very creative, but I can't really think of any other name for it. It shoots in three directions, so that's awesome. But now, let's meet up with Zero. Here we are. Finally, we found Sigma's Fortress. Let's go in and put an end to this war against the humans. Okay, that was really cryptic. Are, are, are we fighting for or against the humans? But anyway, there's Sigma's ugly face. Uh, but that's all for today. Like and subscribe. Peace and sheep. And have a great day. See you next week.